Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Okay, so here we have one of these little insect spray things which they just periodically spray out every once in a while. It's got various time settings on here, whichever they are. And it sprays this. Now what I've actually found is I've had lots of issues with different ones, or different brands, and this is just this particular one. But um, I have issues with the fact that they, the batteries just, they aren't strong enough. They don't last very long because of the batteries. The batteries can't push the lever down that's inside here. So I thought oh, I'll pull it apart. And these are just cheap batteries. I mean, these are these multi-pack things. But they're not too light. There's actually a bit of weight in these ones. I've actually had different brands of these little battery packs. And yeah, these ones are marginally better. But these are brand new batteries and I still can't operate it. So I'm going to pull it apart. I thought oh, I'll just do a little teardown. Just have a look. So what, what, a little consideration I had is that you've got these little, we'll see. I don't like these single-use batteries really. I've got these um, lithium cells here. Now, an idea I actually had. Because looking at this again, there's a lot of space across here, you know, in this area. So about lighting, by the way. Um, currently got a power cut. They're doing some works on the electrical system, and so I can't turn any more lighting on. Um, you know, using a battery on the camera. I was thinking, you could almost like, you could almost squeeze it in there, couldn't you? Like that. It could almost fit if I'd like trim those bits off. I could shove a lithium cell in there. You know, that's kind of what jumped at me. I think, oh, maybe I could upgrade from 3 volts to 3.7 volts. More power. And obviously, these can put out a crap ton of, of, of uh, energy as well. These have put out a lot of current. Whereas these, obviously, not so much. I'm going to try and get it's, it's two screws here to hold this in. I'm going to try and pull this thing apart and we'll see if we can make any progress. And before I start this, I think I'll show you these batteries, right? These are just little, I don't know, bulk pack batteries you get from the supermarket or places like that. Um, cheap packets, you, you know you're not going to get much from them, but um, this is my little hand tool battery tester as you can see here. And get it on there. It shows it being perfectly good, and that's actually a good reading for this, alright? So that's actually right. I'll check the other battery as well, just to prove it's both okay. Here we go, same deal. Looks alright. And if I do voltages, bring this over here. Yeah, one five six six, and the other one. Yeah, one five six four. So those are perfectly fine levels. So I can't really fault that. So the batch themselves, on the surface at least, look okay. They just can't produce enough current. So it's alright if you've got something which isn't like a high drain device, I suppose. Let's get these screws out of this thing. I thought I'd do something different for a change, you know. Just a bit of a different video to do, isn't it? Putting a domestic thing apart. Yeah, there's also this little, this little switch down here which has to come out. Let's see if the wire's long enough to not need to. Alright, now let's get this out. Okay, yeah, the wire needs to be pulled out. It is really very little to this thing. All right. Try and get the switch out of here. This switch just senses when the um, when the canister's been removed, so it doesn't try and spray. Also, flashes different color LED as well. There we go. All right. So let's put some batteries in it. I'll show you what I mean. And there's actually a little LED that flashes inside there. Okay. There it just went off as well. When you take the canister out, so it's green there, and it does red, as you can see there. When you take the canister out. But still try to spray, interestingly, but that's just gone off again. Alright, so we'll move it, but when you've got a canister in there, it can't actually work. Alright, so if it goes down, lies in the canister, push it, push it back up again. Kind of. So if I put the canister in, it should push against it and actually fire it, but it won't. I'm just going to hold it in my hand like that. Let's we'll see what happens. Probably face it away from the camera slightly just in case it does actually spray this time. Yeah, so it's pushing pretty hard, but it seems that the actual pressure required to spray the can is too much. So, yeah, there's the inside. It's obviously it's 3 volts in series, so you've got 3 volts going straight to one side of the motor, which is the positive side there. The negative side comes off 
to the zuga board here. Yes, all that's doing there, that's sliding a little mechanism, which is sliding a switch, there's a little swipe switch in there, so we're going to pull this apart. What the hell? Let's pull it right apart and um, see what's inside it. So this little connector here, let's pop this off first. Take my beefy tweezers for this. Come on. Here we go. Alright, so there's that. It's actually a, I don't know, it's, it's like a crimped on connection just there. I'm not a fan of those, anyway. So that's the wiring for that part. We get that out of the way. So we'll try and get the control board out and have a good look at that because obviously it's just not that interesting in there really. A lot of mechanical bits and pieces. So it's got three screws that holds it together. Really wish my lighting was working right now, but anyway. If the mate do. If I put a torch up it will just wash it out and have big shadows, so it's not really an improvement. So three screws there. I think I might have to take the little lever part out here. So you can see it's got like a gear. So there's a little gear on there which runs along the switch, which I think will probably just pop out, will it? And I'll attach the circuit ball. Which I might be able to get out now actually, without lifting it all apart. But no, you want it all apart anyway. Let's try and unhook this wire from here, because that's what's stopping it pulling out. So there's just the mechanical assembly there, all right? Oh, screws falling out. That's okay. There is a lubricate. There's some silicone in here, although it's a bit sticky. So the motor just turns that and drives that lever using that inner gear there. So it drives this outer gear here, goes to that pinion assembly onto the outer of that one there to torque it up, and then same again onto this one to torque it up again. Yeah, it's a pretty simple mechanism. Just a bit of gearing to torque it up. Don't have to go into that bit too much. So there's that little micro switch. Well, yeah, I suppose it's a micro switch, isn't it? Little plunger. Very simple little switch. And there's a the control board. Let's try and get this out of here. Okay. So there's a mechanical switch on the board here, which has this. There we go. Side on. That's why I can get it off. Side on switch. And there's the gear which is in the faces to this piece. Alright, so that's what slides that over. And on this side is a little microcontroller blob. Not a lot to see there, unfortunately. So it's got two LEDs, two resistors obviously for the LEDs themselves. I need to get as close as you can see it, don't I? Okay, so there you go. So blob, two diodes right there. Let's get something to point with. Alright, so there's diodes. Right there, there's two resistors obviously for the for the diodes so they don't get overdriven. There's a resistor there with obviously a little transistor or something just there. Just trying to trace this around. Figure out where the connections go. Hold on, let's look at the plug. So negative is the very end pin. Motor is the second pin in. So it's called the switch is pin one and pin three. We'll call positive pin two. We we'll call that pin one there. So that's the switch which goes to the microcontroller. Pin 3 goes to something. It's like a main rail around the outside. Which also connects to the last pin. So that's the ground. All right, so the switch goes between ground and goes to an input to the microcontroller. Pin 2 was positive. So that goes... It's got a diode across it here. It's like polarity protection in case you put the batteries in back to front. And that goes obviously to the microcontroller, then you've got a couple of capacitors across here as well. Interestingly, must be because of the motor putting out potential noise. So there's a switch here just goes between the outside of the switch is grounded. Common is grounded, so it's just putting negative inputs into the microcontroller. Nothing too complicated there. Yet diode there is just reverse polarity protection. That is all that's doing, because that is actually across the supply rails between positive and negative. That's reverse, that's reverse voltage protection. And that transistor there 
is going to that pin there, which is the motor. So that is obviously switching the motor, as expected. There's a ground connection, so it's switching the negative, so it'd be a positive from the gate that side. Trying to get any shot. This isn't the best camera work, I'm afraid. Um, so the gate's there, and it goes through that resistor, which is also then going to the microcontroller. So it's a pretty simple circuit. All the brains is, you know, behind that little blob there. More power. Would it be bad for the microcontroller? Potentially. <laughs> Interesting. I should show you this side, actually. Might get a bit of a laugh. So you can see on there, it says... Maybe you can see. Hope you can see. French fries ASIC. Let's get on there. Interesting. French fries ASIC. And it's version 01, 2013. Well, 2013, 10, 11. So it could be 11th of the 10th or 10th of the 11th, whichever way you perceive it, I suppose. That's it. That's the brains of it. Not a lot to it, is there? And that's the thing with this, when you do this, is you've got to make sure that it's in the correct position when you put it back together, otherwise the switch won't be in the right place. I'm actually wondering if that's part of the problem as well. Because it never actually, even if it in the off position, it wouldn't actually be off. So I'm wondering if maybe that was actually misaligned as well from the factory, you never know. My thing's all gunky from this bloody slime on those cogs. <laughs> Let's put that back in. Better stay in focus. It's a pretty simple bloody system anyway, but still I'm not sure I put it back together correctly. That's it. Yep, feels like it. Let's put the screws back in again. So yeah, I do want to look at giving it more power. The motor's quite a big load for it, and it's causing problems trying to get get the thing to actually run. Now obviously I could just avoid this baby by buying high quality batteries, but then you got the whole issue of I don't like the whole throwaway thing, you know. I don't like to waste, and it's a huge amount of waste of batteries, you know, a lot of resources, a lot of wastage, I don't like that at all, anyway, so that's all that in there, that's off position, so it should be fully over, wherever that is, yeah, it will pop in, all right, so let's just adjust that to where I think the off position is, nice, got to go slightly, quite in the right place, and realign, try again. Fairly even movement now, actually. So I'm actually just looking down here, centering it. See that little lever, maybe? The little pointer there. So I'm trying to center it in about the same place in both directions. So it's fully over each way, it is in about the same place. Yeah, it's close enough, I think. Yeah, it looks about right. Cool. So let's just pop these back in again, put these wires back in. So. I don't know, was this interesting? Oh, you tell me. Anyone ever pulled one of these things apart before? Yeah. Big Clive pulls apart two dollar things. All the time. Um, but I'm not quite sure that uh, it's what my channel's about. But today I'll just give it a go. Pull apart something cheap and simple and see how it comes out. You know, what's the harm? Well, actually it's quite a bit of harm because of YouTube. You can do all kinds of weird things and completely destroy your channel. Uh, and that spring there is coming out. Quality design there. Yeah. So yeah, I think it is like ripe for modification. You could you very easily just tap onto those two points there and put a different battery in that space? I mean, I reckon that could probably fit, eh? I mean, all that's stopping it is that little notch there, and I could probably just cut those off right now because it's not going to matter. Yeah, let's cut those off. I don't drop the colours. Almost landed on my foot, that would have been painful. Yeah, cut that off. Cut that off. Don't need them. You know them for more power. The other thing I'm wondering about is I've got this um where are they? These single battery holders, but I don't think it's gonna fit in the case. 
I think it's too wide. It is. It's a shame because if I could just put a battery holder in there, I could always strap it to the back and run the wires through. <laughs> more power. Always need more power. Um, now I can actually solder if I need to. I've got my UPS here, which does have more bench gear running through the UPS. It's like a protection system I have running. So if I really need to, I can actually solder, but if it's very noisy, the UPS beeps all the time and stuff like that, so it's not, not an ideal situation. Come on, let's go get lined up again. Is that, that must hold the spring part. I should push against the spring part there, which is popping back out again. Yes, I think that's what it's supposed to do. Line up to that. Maybe. Well, it feels like it's in. Do you screw it? Yeah, it feels like it is. Okay, then I'll be it. Yeah. Okay, pop the switch back in. My desk must be le leaning very slightly because everything rolls off my desk all the time. Should get a spirit level on it or something. There you go. Well, it's back together. Let's see if it still powers up. Switch piston's correct. Yay. Is it going to try and operate? Yes, it is. I wonder if I should actually try and do like, measure the voltage across there as it's operating, see if it's um, sagging too much. We could try that, couldn't we? Let's put a sprayer in there. Flick the switch. Fingers crossed. Just wanted to capture it operating and see what it dips down to. Because you think if it's got a poor quality battery and it's got a high current. Right. What did that do? Max, min, 3 volts. I mean, it didn't dip by much, did it? You would expect that to dip a lot more than that if it was actually having trouble actually operating. It just seems like it just doesn't work very well. <laughs> Can I boost this up a bit? Is, is, should we give it more power now? What do you reckon? I've got a couple of wires. Can I sort of touch them on the end? I'll leave that battery in, take this battery out. That way it's not in parallel with those batteries. And I need to kind of wedge this wire in that spiral there. Let's try that. That works. This battery should be pretty charged, actually. I'm usually pretty good at making sure that was good. All right, so there you go. It's more voltage. Now, will this work? Well, it worked. Barely, but it worked. So even with a higher voltage, higher current battery, that was a struggle. It definitely needs more power, somehow. Let's just check this battery and see what it's actually running at, just to be sure it's actually okay. I think it is. Yeah, 4.1. All right, so plenty of power in that battery. And in that struggle to make that operate. So, is that interesting or what? No, let's just do a manual spray. I mean, that's what it's supposed to do. It definitely didn't do that. You know what I've got here? Oh, that's putting over too much. <laughs> I, was just, I was tempted to get my triple cell one instead and do three batches. That's like 12 volts. I imagine that will blow the crap out of the microcontroller. Being one volt higher up is probably okay. Being uh, nine volts higher up probably won't be. So this actually did work go okay just now. Let's do it again. Maybe that first spray is what I needed to clear it. Um, let's try it again. See, that works. That works. Okay, so maybe an upgrade is an option. Let's put the original batteries back in again. Compare it. See, original batteries can't do it. <laughs> so, yeah.
18650 upgrade is looking very likely. Hmm. Let's take this back out. So how am I going to do this? Um, I could try and feed those wires through the case. Those wires are probably going to be short. Yeah, I mean, I would like to put it in there, but obviously you can see it's not going to fit. Screw it on like that, and then just run the wires in. That'll reach actually. So, um, bugger it, let's do it. Okay, so I've got it half mounted on. I've got one screw in. Let's stick another screw in. I haven't drilled any holes. I'm just going to shove them straight into the plastic because these are self-tapping screws. So they should pull themselves in. Okay, here. Yeah. So the battery holder's on the side nice and securely. So I've just got to run the wires around and uh, get them all nicely lined up. So that one can go there like that. This one will just go straight across like so and solder onto there. Nice and simple. Now, I'm going to solder these on without recording because the UPS is going to make a hell of a racket and you, you will hate it. So I'll come back once I've got it soldered on. Okay, so that's the wire soldered on. Just going to tidy up this routing a little bit. It's never going to be particularly pretty, but you know, it's going to be better, I suppose. Let me shove that through there. Try and hook that around that one. Might be that one. So I might just put a little slot in there where the wire comes through. Just to, yeah, you can see us getting pinched. So let's put a little slot in there just to help that. So the wire's got somewhere to go, so it's not in the way. Like that. Yeah, that's, it. that's what it was, is the rib wire. Okay. Truck of battery in. Right way up. Oh, positive is downwards, I don't like that. Must be honest, anyway. I think it's just slightly warped. Maybe I need to get my hot air and... and um, Bend that back down again. Oh, I just sprayed over my arm. Anyway, it works. <laughs> Upgrade complete. What could possibly go wrong? Get you next time. Hope you liked it. Yeah, can I get my thumb in a shot? Here you go. Yeah. Hope you liked it. It's. Yeah. Bye. We really should change probes on this thing, but these ones are really convenient. Alright, so stick that across there. Here you go, 1.557. Focus. Focus, you bugger. Come on. What is it with this bloody auto-focusing these days? Ah. <sighs>